My days working, taking care of my little ones can be a lot. I checked out care.com and it was so easy for me to find local, experienced, and background check sitters. Finding our babysitter was way more affordable than I thought. Care.com makes it super easy. Search for qualified candidates. You can view their profiles, read reviews and ratings, check their availability, send messages directly, get the help that you need. Care.com should be every person's go-to. Imagine the softest sheets you've ever felt. Now imagine them getting even softer over time. I'm here to tell you about Bolin Branch and how you can discover this new level of softness with their iconic sheets. In a recent customer survey, 96% responded that Bolin Branch sheets get softer with every wash. They source the rarest 100% organic cotton for an incredible softness to start. Then they skip the toxins and harsh chemicals for a natural feel unlike anything else, and it all comes together with their signature weave. This special design feels buttery, breathable, and unlocks new levels of softness with every wash, and they stand behind their promise of softness. With their 30-night guarantee, you can wash, style, and sleep in their sheets for an entire month. If during the 30 nights, you don't love your sheets or feel them getting softer and softer, you can send them right back. No questions asked. So head to BollandBranch.com for 15% off your first order with code ODYSSEY. That's B-O-L-L and Branch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Welcome in here to the Friday Shoot Around. I am Ryan Gilbert. Today we are joined by former Wildcat Clint Stewart. As always, we're sponsored by the Part-Time Beverage Company. Be sure you're checking out the Cape Cod, the club special, everything that the Part-Time uh, Beverage Company has got to offer. Clint, my man, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, really well. Glad to be here and thanks for inviting me on the show. Before we dive into things here with K-State, we'll, we'll touch on kind of the season as a whole and also just a look ahead to to March Madness and the Big 12 tournament as well. But just update uh, everybody that might be listening that hasn't kept up with you for the last 10, 15 years, 20 years. I don't know how it's how long it's been since you graduated, but you're obviously uh, giving back in in different ways with what basketball has has given you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been um, it's been 15 years. You just reminded me of that now, <laughs> uh, but it's been a good good 15 years. Um, you know, currently working for Phillips 66 uh, Energy Company in, in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, <clears throat> and then also um, coaching basketball. So head basketball coach for Bartlesville High School team. Um, there's a guy that uh, K-State and Coach Tango recruiting that, that I have the honor of, of coaching and been coaching for the last three years, David Castillo. Uh, he'll be uh, turning a senior next year. Um, and so a lot of people are familiar with that name and obviously kind of link uh, him with me since they know I'm coaching him. So it's been good. Uh, our season's over, though. And so uh, I have some time, some time back for a few weeks uh, before we start gearing up and preparing for next year. You've obviously been to to Manhattan again with Castillo to visit just for him. You've gone with him, right? Um, what have your interactions just been with K-State and, and Jerome Tang and his staff from top to bottom? How has it has it been with them and your thoughts from afar watching them this season? Man, I tell you, it's been uh, it's been amazing what he's been able to do. Uh, obviously, this year, and I had the opportunity to um, to meet Coach Tang. Um, actually, he flew in with his whole coaching staff into Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Um, I think it was the day or that maybe the day after that the open recruiting season was was here, and um, it was like ten o'clock at night, and they flew in. Uh, we stood in our high school Bartlesville gym for about an hour and a half. Um, obviously, myself, David, and his family, and the whole coaching staff. And that was my first time meeting them, and uh, from the very first interactions, um, I knew it was special, man. He's he's special, uh, you know, and, and you can feel the energy when he walks into the building. Um, you know, the, the boys, the kids, the, they they believe in what he's preaching and what he's giving them, and um, you see where it's taking them, man. It's been been amazing to watch uh, from afar, and obviously, I got back to one of the games, home games this year um, against Texas Tech. Um, but just amazing individual. His whole staff is really good, high energy, um, and he's he's fun to watch. You know, he's involved with the students. Uh, he's really uh, embraced uh, Manhattan and embraced uh, the culture, embraced the, the the school, and that's just been awesome to see. And so, um, I still have conversations with him. I texted him actually just yesterday, um, congratulating him on Coach of the Year. You know. Uh, awards that he's already received and probably a few more that he's going to get as well. And uh, he, he texted back pretty quick, which is pretty, pretty nice. So uh, it's been great. How would you summarize K-State's season as a whole? Well, if you, if you think about, um, 
where they were preseason ranked and to, to where we, you know, ended up. Um, I mean, you'd have to say it was the, I don't want to say a turnaround, but probably the biggest surprise in, in, in CAA. when you think about, you know, the big 12 had them ranked number 10 preseason. Uh, last time I checked, there's only 10 teams in the big 12. So, um, you know, and then to finish at three and then obviously have a shot at, at two and even possibly one. I mean, uh, just amazing, you know, just amazing. And, and like I said, the energy that he's brought, um, and I love just, you know, the home games are packed. Uh, everyone's feeling the energy. Everyone's excited. Um, the, the, the boys are playing so well. I mean, they play so hard. Um, obviously, Marquise, I mean, his game just really got unlocked this year, you know, and um, the things that he was able to do and, and been able to do and continue doing as we move into the Big 12 tournament and the NCAA tournament. Um, it's just it's been a tremendous year, I think, overall for Kansas State. And and one that not many people, you know, obviously with Coach Tang, everyone was excited about him, but no one knew. Um, you know, exactly what he would bring because he's been at Baylor for 20 years, hadn't been a head coach, you know, and um, just what he's been able to do in year one, it just shows that the future is very bright, which is which is really encouraging and really cool to see. You went through multiple coaching changes at Kansas State, right? How important are the players like Marquise Noel and Ish to to stay in Manhattan and kind of be the glue and sort of that bridge from one coach to another? And, and they obviously played a big part in sort of quote unquote recruiting some of these guys to this team. Yeah, well, I mean, they're the they're the holdovers, right? And they're the faces that everyone knew coming into this year. And everyone else is like, well, we don't know who they are. You know, we'll have to see how they perform on the court and get to know them um as time goes on. Um uh, so it's really big. And especially for I mean, think about Noel's position as a point guard um, and being a leader on the floor as a point guard, um, him coming back um, and being that face and and really giving um given the team and I'm sure gave coach Tang a comfort spot, right. I'm knowing I'm going in with, I have a warrior and I have a guy who's been there and has a lot of experience. Um, and then also, like I said, just one of the best players in the nation as well. Um, and then to get guys in, um, you know, Masood obviously had a, had a great year this year, but don't shoot the basketball. I think that really unlocked. And then able to get guys uh, like Keontae Johnson. I mean, just, it's just, it's been amazing. I'm sure Noel and, and Masood had a, a big uh, part in, in getting those guys here. And so, um, you see that everyone's just bought in, and it's a brotherhood. Um, and anytime you go through coaching changes, it's never easy. Um, but for the guys that stay in and buy in, um, a lot of times you'll reap the uh, rewards of it. And so I'm glad to see it happen. For you personally, what were those transitions like? Yeah, you know, for me, so and, and I had a chance to play for three. Talk about Coach Woldridge, Jim Woldridge, uh, my first two years. Um, and then Bob Huggins for for my junior year, and then Frank Martin my senior year. I can tell you, there's a lot of change um, from Woldridge to Huggins. Of course, Huggins, um, you know, when he came in. It was it was all about defense, and uh, I quickly learned that if I wasn't in a stance, or if I had no interest in being in a stance, then uh, he had no interest interest in me being on the floor. And so uh, I had to, uh, you know, re really shift my mindset. I learned a lot defensively as far as philosophy. Uh, from him and it was just tough he brought in his own strength and conditioning coach Scott Greenwald who I still have contacts with as well um, and and we learned that you know lifting is not um, just during off season it was during the season and uh, and we lifted hard all the time you know and it was all about the mindset um, you know and, and really try to change change that mindset for us and I think that the shift to, to Martin wasn't as big you know because Martin was kind of tutelage, tutelage underneath uh, Huggins sure. and so um, it wasn't as big, um, but one thing I loved about Frank is Frank loved, 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 and he still does, loves the guys, man. And uh, he's hard on the floor. He's hard in practice. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, he has your back. And at the end of the day, you're going to run through a wall for him. And uh, that's what I loved about him and um, just a great guy as well. Before we talk about postseason play, I want to ask you about the West Virginia loss from Saturday. Is that one that you can kind of just wash and throw in the dumpster? Or does it hurt this team to to have a four game winning streak and then have that snapped and and lose some of that momentum going into the Big Twelve tournament? Yeah, you know, the Big Twelve is so tough, um, and games on the road, winning on the road is so hard. Um, you know, I think it's one that obviously you know you want to come out and, and end the season with the win on the road at West Virginia, um, but you think about where they were at as well. It's it's their senior night um, for them. It's almost a must win game. Um, to hopefully have a chance to get in the NCAA tournament and, and a decent seat in the NCAA tournament. Um, and so it's it's once you know going in, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, you'd like to come out on the winning side, but I, I think um, for us, it's, it's one you definitely can throw away and say, all right, now, I mean, everything's about going one and no now, right? And so, um, you know, we've had a lot of tough games. We've won some of them. We've lost some of them. Um, but I think um, all of them 
have built the experience that we need as we head into the uh, Big 12 tournament and then obviously the, the NCAA tournament. And we're hoping that, you know, all that experience we've gained will will benefit us well as, as we're moving forward. So um, start, starts 1-0 uh, Thursday night, TCU. And so that, that's where we got to go get it. Before we take a quick break here, Clint, I want to do a little rapid fire with you, if that's cool, okay? Okay. Okay. Favorite teammate that you played with at K-State? Favorite teammate? Uh, Lance Harris. Okay. Your least favorite opposing player that you went up against? Ooh, there are a couple. Um, the, the first two that come to mind are, are A.C. Law, played at Texas A&M and um dj augustine at texas and dj was so hard because of their offense was just ball screen ball screen and ball screen some more for him and so uh, i hated having to guard him i'm surprised there's no ku players on that list <laughs> list of two <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know you know and, and, and you know, mario charmos charmos would be up there but uh, i i normally guarded uh, russell robinson and i had a good rapport with those guys so <laughs> gotcha. favorite memory playing at k-state favorite memory um Two of them, beating KU at KU and beating KU at home. <laughs> gotcha. There you go. Last one I've got. What is the angriest that you ever saw Frank Martin? Oh, man. I, I Okay. I'll, I'll say this. I can't give the whole story, um, but I believe we're at Missouri. We're playing at Missouri, and uh, we had a player that uh, on our team um, who wasn't going through shoot around too well, uh, wasn't performing too well. Um, and, and Frank, um, made it known that he wasn't too happy about his performance. Um, and I won't go into who the player was or what was said <laughs> and what was going on, but, uh, Frank was, was not, not, not too happy about it. <laughs> gotcha. We'll keep it at that. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> he is Quint Stewart. I'm Ryan Gilbert. We'll take a quick break here on the Friday shoot around. Is your January looking dry? Get some lotion, get a humidifier, and better yet, get Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. With Drizzly, you can compare prices across local stores to get the best price on a huge selection of drinks perfect for dry January. Every single time. Non-alcoholic wines? Have a look. Ready-made mocktails? Grab a straw and order them up. Beer without the alcohol? (laughs) Yep, take your pick. You can find all of them here, in the app in that phone that's in your hand. Could it be any simpler? Nope, not a chance. So shop for great deals on all your dry January beverages or other drinks and get them delivered to your door or blanket fort, maybe. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. And don't forget to lotion up your elbows. They're looking a little dry. Welcome back in here to another special edition of the Friday shoot around. I forgot to mention in the first half, obviously this is going up on Wednesday as we preview uh, postseason play, the Big 12 tournament, March Madness, all that stuff here with former Wildcat Clint Stewart. As mentioned, we're sponsored by the part-time beverage company. Clint, um, Big 12 tournaments here, March Madness is after that. What are just the keys in general to winning in the postseason, not just for Kansas State this season, but just in general, you've been a coach, a player, all that stuff. What's the key to just winning in, in postseason play? Well, I think, um, it, you know, first and foremost, defense travels. And so um, you have to defend. Um, you have to make things tough, you know. And, and I think um, for K-State, you know, we have guys that, that can can defend and have defended. So I think that's going to bode well. Um, two is, you know, you – you have to have some guts about you and um, you know, you, you have to remember that everything that kind of has happened up to this point doesn't matter anymore. And now you have to go um, give everything you have, you know, one game at a time. Um, and, and, you know, you got to bring every, all the energy, everything you have into that game. Um, three is you got to make some shots, you know, and, and, and there's going to be important times where um, another team might be on a run and you're going to need someone to step up and, and make a big shot to either stop that run um, or to calm it down. Um, and so you got to have big time players, you know, make big time plays and, and big time moments. Um, and, and of course, we got two big time players uh, and, and Marquise and, and, and Keontae. Uh, but the other 
guys around them too. You know, they can step up and make some big time shots. And the fourth thing is you got to be a little bit lucky, you know, and uh, sometimes the, the ball um, will bounce your way. Sometimes it won't. And you hope more than not, it bounces your way. Um, and then, so you got to have a little bit of luck and you got to stay injury free with that as well. So uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun to watch. Going off of that, um, what is just the, the difference in mentality playing a regular season game versus playing a postseason game? Yeah, I think um, everything's just heightened a little bit, um, you know, when it comes to the postseason game. And um, I like to think of it as, you know, the feel of when we walk in and we go play in Allen Fieldhouse um, at the very tip of, of the game, it is so loud. You can't hear like us talk. You cannot hear the person next to you talking. And that's what it feels like in the postseason. It might not be as loud, but just everything feels like it matters because everything does matter. Um, and so everything's just heightened. Each shot is heightened a little bit. Defensive stops are heightened, um, you know, and so um, it's – it, that's what makes it fun too, you know, and uh, I think the guys that are built for that and built for the pressure that comes along with it, um, but then also can be calm in the moment and, and understand, um, you know, what got us here is execution. What got us here is getting stops. What got us here is talking, communicating on defense and continue to do those things in those heightened moments. Um, that's what's going to propel those teams to, to, to the top. And so, uh, like I said, I think we're built for it. And I know Coach Tang is ready for those guys to go and then hopefully we can, we can have a good show with them. Coach Tang and a couple of the players have just mentioned how excited they are to play in front of a a lot of purple right in Kansas City. Do you think that that really can make a difference or is that just something that's, you know, hey, there's there's some K-State fans there in the crowd. That's cool. But do you think that that can actually mean something for this team? How much of an edge does that give them? Yeah, I mean, I think as players, you feed off of crowd energy. Um, and, and so, um, you know, and, and that's what it makes it so tough when you're on the road is the only energy a lot of times you have or <laughs> your team on, you know, you have fans in the stands, but you can't really hear them as much, right? And so it's really just the team on, on the bench and, and coaches, and you got to feed off your, your own teammates. Um, when you have the crowd into it as well, um, when you make a big play, I mean, it just it gets you going even more. And so it really can help um, with momentum. It can help help in that that positive of the game. Um, and, and like I said, I, I think it can help guys play better when they have that crowd energy as well. So uh, it's nice uh, for it to be in Kansas City where um, K-State faithful can get there a little bit easier, uh, support the team, and I know they're going to show up and show out. Have you been up to T-Mobile Center now? I guess it used to be Sprint Center, right? You ever been yeah. up there for a tournament? It's, it's been a while. Um, I haven't been in several more than several years to the tournament um but i have been yes yep. yeah it's a lot of fun isn't it it is it is yeah. it is um just as a coach is there anything that that you have learned i mean in general but also with postseason play that there's anything that you've learned that maybe you didn't know or you wish you would have known or had a mentality of when you were a player um i i think one of the things that I, I wish I would have known when I was playing is kind of what I just mentioned is like, don't take anything for granted. Every single thing matters, you know, and, um, you know, if you're going through it, the coaches tell you that and you, you, you think, you know, but you really don't know until it's over. And then once it's over, then you realize like, Oh man, that's what they meant. Everything but like, I, man, I could have, I could have done this, man. I could have maybe gave this extra effort in, in this instance. Um, and, and so as coaches, you try to, um, to, to let the guys know and, and as best as you can and as much as you can, just about how each possession is so important, um, how being locked in is so important, um, how understanding the game plan is so important for every single possession that's out there. Um, and then trying to execute, you know, as best as you can is so important. Um, and then you hope the kids can grasp that and, and, and take that and apply it on the floor. Um, but I still think there's there's a little bit there that it's just it's hard to understand it until it's over. And then you realize like, man, yeah, there was that one possession. I could have gave a little bit more effort or, or done something differently. So don't really know what you got till it's gone, do you? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Let's switch over to the NCAA tournament. I don't want to ask you about a specific team, but is there a specific type of team that maybe K-State doesn't want to get matched up against that can expose the team's weaknesses. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, I think a lot of the just Big 12 in general, I think what's made it so tough this year um, is we've had – we have some really good guards in our conference. Um, and the good thing about that for us is I think we can – 
guard guards. I mean, we've shown that. Um, I think probably a team that that has um, that plays physical with bigs. Um, yeah. I think caused some some issues for us. Um, you know, I, I think obviously guard to guard when talk about Marquise and, and Keontae, I mean, they can match him. Keontae's a forward, but he can match up, um, you know, with, with those guys just as well. Um, and so we, I, I don't think we want to see a, a team, uh, I'm trying to think of maybe Purdue or someone who has a big um, that, that, that you know, could, can really score the ball and is really physical inside. I think that could cause us some some problems um, down, down the road. Um, but then again, you know, we think about the guards, you know, you know, we're, we are going to have to guard them. We can't let them get hot and, and let someone go off for, you know, 30 because, you know, they hit seven or eight threes on us. And, um, you know, but I think our guards can match up really well with, with other guards. Who's the true X factor of this team? Would you say it's Desi Sills or Naquan Tomlin? I, I would say, um, I would say Desi, Desi's energy. Um, and Tomlin brings, you know, great energy as well. And obviously his sure. height and, um, and things are great. Um, but I think what we saw against uh, West Virginia is we missed Desi. I mean, we needed his energy. We needed um, – he plays so hard on both ends of the floor, um, you know, and also b- being left-handed, I think that always gives him an advantage, um, you know. But I, the energy that he brings and the ability to shoot the basketball from the outside, uh, score the basketball, ability to guard defensively, um, you know, I, I think when he plays well, um, it really gives us kind of a three-headed monster that, uh, that we can uh, go into games with. And so hopefully – um, like I said, we'll get him back, and then he's ready to go and, um, you know, finishes off the season really well. In terms of just doing things right and avoid, you know, getting upset, you think it's just as simple as rebound the basketball and, and don't turn it over for K-State to have a, a chance to make a run? Yeah, I think, you know, rebounding is going to be key. Um, turnovers and, 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 of course, you know, Marquise um, – taking care of the basketball and doing what he does, be able to score it, but also get assist and, and and not turning the basketball over. I think it's going to be really important. Um, I also think for, for us is talk about the kind of mention it though, but the, the physicality and we're just going to have to match, you know, the physicality of, of the, of the game and adjust to how games are being called. Um, you know, we can't allow the officials to, to get us upset and, take us away from what we're trying to do. We have to adjust to it. Um, and I think if we can adjust to how the games are called, because once you get into the NCAA tournament, um, these are no longer the same officials. You, know, you might not have the same officials that you're used to seeing. Um, and so they might call the game a little bit differently. It might be an SEC official. It might, you know, be a Pac-12 official. And, and, and so you just got to adjust how it's being called and then take advantage of how it's being called as well. You know, if they're going to let us play more physical, then we have to play more physical. You know, if they're not going to let us play more physical, then, you know, we have to back off a little bit and, and do it a different way. And so uh, being able to adjust on the fly, I think it's going to be really important for us. Um, and then obviously I know Coach Tang and his whole staff, uh, they'll have, um, you know, halftime adjustments and then things that whatever the other team's trying to do that will put us in the best position to compete and best position to win. Are you concerned at all about this team getting upset in the first round or even the second round of March Madness? And, and how do you avoid just – not looking ahead at the final four, or the elite eight, whatever's next on the docket. How do you stay focused on the task at hand? Yeah. I mean, well, any team, like I said, that's, it's called March madness for a reason. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we see it every year uh, where, where teams go in um, and unfortunately, you know, get, get knocked off early. And so, I mean, you can't take any team for granted. You know, it doesn't matter who who it is. You can't say, oh, you know, because we played in the Big 12, we're going to win the first round no matter what. I mean, you got to go out and do it. You got to have the right mindset of going one and oh. Um, and you can't look ahead, you know, because I think when you start looking ahead, um, you know, that's that's when you can become vulnerable to, to losing to a team that maybe, you know, on paper you should you should have beaten. Um, and so it's all about um, all the energy that you have for, the, for that one game, uh, being locked into the game plan for that one game and then uh, going out and executing for that one game. And then once you take care of business, you can celebrate that night, and then it's all right, now what's the next team that we have to play, and let's start locking into what we have to do to go be successful. What do you remember most just from your experiences playing in the NCAA tournament? You guys picked up a win. And you guys were an upset, right, over a six-seeded USC team, right, and then get bounced the next round. What do you just remember most from from that week? Um, so I, I think the number one thing I remember most – is if we would have beat Wisconsin my uh, and then the second round, then I uh, would have had a chance to play Davidson and, and Steph Curry. And so um, I never got that chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can so I can say right now I would I would have locked him up. He wouldn't have scored a point. You know I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
but no, it, it was it was so fun, you know. So the first first round game we played against USC and had a chance to play against OJ Mayo, who was a top guard obviously in the nation at, at that point in time. And I actually got matched up with them to, to guard them the, throughout a, a lot of the game. Um, and and obviously with us uh, being you know the 11th seed and, and I guess the underdog, uh, but we always knew we had the best player on the floor, which is Michael Beasley. Um, and uh, you know him and Bill Walker really played well that game. Jacob Pullen played well, um, and, and so it was a lot of fun getting getting that win, but even just making the NCAA tournament, you know, for, for me, it was the only year we made it my senior year. Um, and, and, you know, just, just having that opportunity to play in it. Um, I wish the guys that I played with before that year had the same opportunity. I feel very fortunate and blessed. That I didn't get that opportunity. Um, like I said, wish we could have went on farther than we did, but um, it was a great experience. Clint, we'll wrap it up with this. What is the ceiling for Kansas state in March madness? national championship that's easy <laughs> that's easy um you know i think um you know i think we have all the tools i mean i think you know i think we've proven that we can go beat any any team uh that we play against uh, but now it's just all about performing uh on the big stage at the right time in the moment uh big time players as i mentioned they step up and make big time plays in big time moments and we're gonna need our our big time guys to do that um and so i'm hoping they can stay healthy and um you know have a really good postseason play Coach Tang always says that big-time players make big-time plays and big-time moments, and you've mentioned that here a couple times. Are you guys like twins or something? I, I didn't even know he said that. So <laughs> he says stuff. it all the time. Oh, yeah. Yep. It, it, Clint, I appreciate you hopping on with me, man, and we'll stay in touch, obviously, and, and wish you the best. Okay, man? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Once again, he's Clint Stewart. I am Ryan Gilbert. This is the Friday Shootaround. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked, temperature set, lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562 314 4603 for complete details. Matt Ryan? Did you know the NFL playoffs on CBS stream live on Paramount Plus? I just want a frozen fudge bar. Bet you didn't know Super Bowl 58 was in Vegas this year. What about a Sunday? Super Bowl Sunday on CBS streams live on Paramount Plus. Seriously? Would an NFL MVP lie? Former MVP. Can we at least get a selfie? Of course. I got your NFL playoffs on CBS and Super Bowl 58 streaming live on Paramount Plus.